Hello everyone, my name is Manav Kohli, and today we will present our work entitled Open Access Full Duplex Wireless in the Orbit and Cosmos Testbeds. In recent years, the demand for wireless testbeds has increased due to the need for well-controlled wireless experimentation. In 2005, the Orbit testbed was established to meet this need, providing an open access testbed for users in academia and industry. There is now a new demand for a testbed which can support technologies such as millimeter wave and 5G. To meet this new need, the Cosmos testbed is currently being deployed in New York City. Cosmos will provide open access experimentation in a realistic city scale environment with the ability to experiment with custom hardware, such as our full duplex radios. Cosmos's available resources and capabilities were presented earlier today during a tutorial session, which should also be available online. So for this talk, first we will briefly go over the Orbit in Cosmos testbeds and the concept of full duplex wireless. We will then discuss our full duplex radios and how they are integrated in the two testbeds. Finally, we will show how the testbeds may be used with example experiments. So let's start with the Orbit and Cosmos testbeds. The Orbit grid which some of you may have used before, is an array of several hundred wireless nodes located indoors in a well-controlled wireless environment. The architecture of each radio node allows for the integration of custom hardware and enables remotely accessible wireless experimentation. The NSF Platforms for Advanced Wireless Research Cosmos Testbed is an open access testbed for wireless communications that represents the next generation testbed beyond orbit. Cosmos aims to address the needs of next generation wireless communications by providing features such as low latencies and high bandwidths and a real world city scale environment for experimentation. Cosmos achieves its goals through the use of cutting edge technology such as millimeter wave phased arrays, miles of city provided dark fiber, and most important for this talk, integration of customized hardware, again, such as our full duplex radios. Cosmos will occupy a one square mile area in West Harlem, New York City. We are following a phased approach for deployment. We finished deploying the pilot phase in May 2019, and in September 2019, the testbed area was designated as an innovation zone by the Federal Communications Commission. The pilot phase of the testbed became generally available to researchers this June, and we are currently in phase one of deployment. The blue connections on this diagram represent the fiber optic connections between the various sites. Also shown are two indoor sandboxes. Sandbox 2, located at Columbia, is where our custom full duplex radios are integrated and remotely accessible to researchers. The development of the Cosmos testbed has been driven in part by the deployment of custom hardware, which can then be accessed remotely. To work towards this, we have developed a pilot experiment in full duplex wireless. This has been spearheaded by the Flexicon project at Columbia, a collaboration between the Cosmic and WinMet groups. Flexicon's goal is to design and evaluate algorithms and protocols across various layers of the network stack for integrated circuit-based full duplex nodes. To summarize, our goals are to make our customized full duplex hardware openly accessible to researchers and demonstrate successful integration of customized experimental hardware into Orbit and Cosmos. Now we can take a look at full duplex and our full duplex radios. Existing wireless systems are known as half duplex, meaning that they separate transmission and reception either into different time slots or different frequency bands. Full duplex wireless, on the other hand, allows for simultaneous transmission and reception on the same frequency channel. The benefit of full duplex includes an increased throughput at the physical layer up to two times with lower latency and more flexible use of the available wireless spectrum. One of the main challenges associated with full duplex is what is known as self-interference. For successful full duplex communication, we must cancel the comparatively much more powerful transmitter signal from the signal that we receive. It can be helpful to regard such a system as analogous to a pair of noise-canceling headphones. Outside noise, which is known to the headphones, 
is processed in such a way that it can be cancelled from the audio signal. Prior work on full duplex has included techniques for self-interference cancellation using fixed delay lines. Full duplex phased arrays and system level designs such as full duplex relays have also been presented. For the most part, prior work has been evaluated in simulation or on small lab-based setups. Many groups have worked on full duplex wireless, but not all can build the radios. Therefore, we provide the first openly accessible full duplex hardware, which can be remotely accessed by other researchers. The use of delay lines as in prior work is prohibitive to an integrated circuit solution due to the space required to implement them on a die. We have therefore utilized novel circuits to, to develop two generations of compact integrated circuit based RF self-interference cancellers. The first generation is a narrowband design whereas the second generation is a wideband design. Our wideband self-interference canceller is based on the principle of frequency domain equalization, which is suitable for an integrated implementation. The self-interference channel can be emulated in the, in the frequency domain using reconfigurable bandpass filters with amplitude and phase control. Multiple bandpass filter taps can be used in parallel to increase the cancellation bandwidth. We call this our Generation 2 canceller. We can note that this is somewhat analogous to an audio equalizer, which is used to produce a desired profile in the frequency domain. Next, we will discuss the design of the integrated full duplex radios. To facilitate integration of our full duplex radios, we emulate the integrated circuit-based full duplex cancellers on a printed circuit board. This provides an easier and more robust interface to the software-defined radio and provides a superior noise figure and lower DC power consumption. The integrated full duplex radios consist of three parts. The first is the printed circuit board canceller and its accompanying components. The second is a software defined radio and the third is a remotely accessible computing resource. The completed Gen 1 and Gen 2 radios are shown here. Shown on each are an antenna tuner, circulator and the RF canceller PCB. There is also a sub 20 controller which is used to configure the canceller PCB over a USB connection. All components are mounted in a box for a robust construction that is suitable for integration. We can now look at how we integrated our customized Gen 1 full duplex radio in the Orbit testbed. The canceller PCB has two tunable components. The phase shifter, which is controlled via an 8-bit digital to analog controller, and an attenuator with 7-bit control. The phase shifter gives a full 360 degree tuning range and the attenuator can provide up to 31.5 dB of attenuation. The RF self-interference cancellation measurement is shown below. In total, 40 to 45 dB of RF self-interference cancellation can be achieved across a 5 MHz bandwidth. Also shown is a photograph of the integration procedure in the orbit testbed. Each orbit node consists of a compute node and a USRP N210 software-defined radio. Each node is connected to the orbit grid console over the top of rack switch, which the experimenter can log into over SSH. We integrate the Gen 1 canceller box in node 1110 by connecting it to the USRP N210 and the compute node as shown in this figure. This setup provides a remotely accessible full duplex radio that can be accessed via the Orbit Grid console. We can now look how we integrate our customized wideband Generation 2 full duplex radios in the Cosmos testbed. As for the Gen 1 radio, we implement the Gen 2 canceller on a PCB. This particular PCB shown at the bottom of the page also emulates the Gen 1 narrowband canceller so the experimenter can either use the wideband path or the narrowband path. Two Gen 2 RF canceller boxes are integrated with USRP2 software-defined radios and a compute node in Cosmos Sandbox 2. The integrated full duplex radios can achieve over 50 decibels of cancellation across 20 MHz bandwidth, enabling wideband full duplex communication. In total, there are 11 configurable components for this canceller PCB. These are outlined on the figure below. 
For each FDE tap on the wideband path, there is a center frequency capacitor, a quality factor capacitor, an attenuator, and a phase shifter. The narrowband path contains a phase shifter and attenuator, and finally, there is an RF switch used to switch between the narrowband and wideband paths. These components are all configured using the Sub20 device, and as part of the integration in Cosmos, we provide software for configuring the canceller PCBs. The topology of Sandbox 2 is shown here. The experimenter may log into the Sandbox 2 console over SSH. Then, via a top of rack switch, the experimenter can log into the FD compute node, which controls the full duplex radios and runs the experiments. In this way, the full duplex radios and example experiments are openly and remotely accessible to researchers, meeting a key goal of the Cosmos testbed. Now we can have a look at an example experiment that is available to researchers. For the remainder of this presentation, we are only going to focus on the Cosmos testbed. The instructions for Orbit are similar and are available at the link below. To access the full duplex radios, the first step is to log into the Cosmos Sandbox 2 console over SSH. Once logged in, the experimenter can then log in again over SSH to the full duplex compute node. The experiments are then run through GNU radio on the full duplex compute node. The full tutorial for this process may be found at the link at the bottom of this slide. To demonstrate and provide examples of our full duplex radios, we developed a series of experiments in GNU radio. These experiments utilize custom C++ out of tree modules, which allow for real time performance. We use libraries such as Eigen and FFTW for efficient computations. These out-of-tree modules are designed to work with the built-in GNU radio orthogonal frequency division multiplexing physical layer blocks. The custom modules include a packet encapsulation process which adds extra OFDM symbols used for self-interference channel estimation. They also include the digital self-interference cancellation itself and a module for programming the canceller PCB through the sub-20 USB to SPI interface. An example flow graph with our custom blocks highlighted is shown here. We note that this software forms a baseline, which can be expanded on further by experimenters. Now we can have a look at an example experiment, which shows the packet reception ratio for a full duplex link using the integrated Gen2 radios. When the flow graph file is opened, this is what the experimenter will see. At the top of this flow graph, we can see two OFDM packet streams, which are both being transmitted. Underneath that, we can see blocks for performing the digital self-interference cancellation on the received signal, as well as computing the signal to noise ratio for each packet and counting by how many packets are successfully received. If we press the green play button and wait a short while, the GUI for this experiment will show up. At the top of the GUI window, we see a time domain signal representing the signal received after RF self-interference cancellation and after RF and digital self-interference cancellation. We also see a bar showing the measured signal to noise ratio of each packet and the measured packet reception ratio over time. If we move the slider down here, we can control the transmit power of one of the radios. We can see that if we lower the power, we also lower the measured signal to noise ratio and this causes a decrease in the average measured packet reception ratio. We can also see on the right-hand side, these constellation diagrams have become less clear. In conclusion, we have integrated our customized Gen 1 and Gen 2 full duplex radios in the Orbit and Cosmos testbeds. These radios are openly and remotely accessible to researchers and are available alongside example experiments. Researchers can use the integrated full duplex radios and example experiments in their own research. Integrating the full duplex radios in this way will serve as a blueprint for future integration of customized hardware in Cosmos. In the future, we plan to integrate more full duplex radios in the sandbox, as well as connect them to more powerful software-defined radios and compute nodes. Tutorials and the open source hardware and software can be found at the following links.
Thank you very much for your time today.